On the 20 slides shown below, I present the original photographs of the Second World War from the German archive, which are in my collection. These photos are from my collection department, Wehrmacht on the Eastern and Western Fronts. If you like it, subscribe to my YouTube, like it, so you don't miss the new weekly presentations. If you would like to order 5 inches by 7 inches copies of these photos from the original, you can specify which photos you would like to receive. Laboratory quality. Enjoy your viewing. Johannes Erwin Eugen Rommel, the 15th of November 1891, the 14th of October 1944, was a German field marshal during World War II. Popularly known as the Desert Fox, German, Wustenfuch, pronounced, VSTNFKS, he served in the Wehrmacht, armed forces, of Nazi Germany, as well as serving in the Reichswehr of the Weimar Republic, and the Army of Imperial Germany. Rommel was injured multiple times in both world wars. Rommel was a highly decorated officer in World War I and was awarded the Paula Merit for his actions on the Italian front. In 1937, he published his classic book on military tactics, infantry attacks, drawing on his experiences in that war. In World War II, he commanded the 7th Panzer Division during the 1940 invasion of France. His leadership of German and Italian forces in the North African campaign established his reputation as one of the ablest tank commanders of the war, and earned him the nickname Der Wust in Fuge, the Desert Fox. Among his British adversaries he had a reputation for chivalry, and his phrase war without hate has been uncritically used to describe the North African campaign. A number of historians have since rejected the phrase as myth and uncovered numerous examples of German war crimes and abuses towards both enemy soldiers and native populations in Africa during the conflict. Other historians note that there is no clear evidence Rommel was involved or aware of these crimes, with some pointing out that the war in the desert, as fought by Rommel and his opponents, still came as close to a clean fight as there was in World War II. 5. He later commanded the German forces opposing the Allied cross-channel invasion of Normandy in June 1944. With the Nazis gaining power in Germany, Rommel gradually came to accept the new regime. Historians have given different accounts of the specific period and his motivations. 6. He was a supporter of Adolf Hitler, at least until near the end of the war, if not necessarily sympathetic to the party and the paramilitary forces associated with it. In 1944, Rommel was implicated in the 20th of July plot to assassinate Hitler. Because of Rommel's status as a national hero, Hitler wanted to eliminate him quietly instead of having him immediately executed, as many other plotters were. Rommel was given a choice between committing suicide, in return for assurances that his reputation would remain intact and that his family would not be persecuted following his death, or facing a trial that would result in his disgrace and execution, he chose the former and committed suicide using a cyanide pill. Rommel was given a state funeral, and it was announced that he had succumbed to his injuries from the strafing of his staff car in Normandy. Rommel has become a larger-than-life figure in both Allied and Nazi propaganda, and in post-war popular culture. Numerous authors portray him as an apolitical, brilliant commander and a victim of Nazi Germany. Promotion to Armored Division Commander General Erwin Rommel and his staff observe troops of the 7th Panzer Division practicing a river crossing at the Moselle River in France in 1940. Following the invasion of Poland, Rommel began lobbying for command of one of Germany's Panzer Divisions, of which there were then only ten. Rommel's successes in World War I were based on surprise and maneuver, two elements for which the new Panzer units were ideally suited. Rommel received a promotion to a general's rank from Hitler ahead of more senior officers. Rommel obtained the command he aspired to, despite having been earlier turned down by the army's personnel office, which had offered him command of a mountain division instead. According to Peter Caddick Adams, he was backed by Hitler, the influential 14th Army commander Wilhelm List, a fellow at Imberg, a middle-class military outsider, and likely Heinz Guderian, the commander of 19 Army Corps, as well. Going against military protocol, 
This promotion added to Rommel's growing reputation as one of Hitler's favored commanders, although his later outstanding leadership in France quelled complaints about his self-promotion and political scheming. The 7th Panzer Division had recently been converted to an armored division consisting of 218 tanks in three battalions, thus, one tank regiment, instead of the two assigned to a standard Panzer Division, with two rifle regiments, a motorcycle battalion, an engineer battalion, and an anti-tank battalion. Upon taking command on 10 February 1940, Rommel quickly set his unit to practice in the maneuvers they would need in the upcoming campaign. The invasion began on 10 May 1940. By the third day Rommel and the advance elements of his division, together with a detachment of the 5th Panzer Division, had reached the Meuse, where they found the bridges had already been destroyed, Guderian and Georg Hans Reinhardt reached the river on the same day. Rommel was active in the forward areas, directing the efforts to make a crossing, which were initially unsuccessful because of suppressive fire by the French on the other side of the river. Rommel brought up tanks and flak units to provide counter-fire and had nearby houses set on fire to create a smoke screen. He sent infantry across in rubber boats, appropriated the bridging tackle of the 5th Panzer Division, personally grabbed a light machine gun to fight off a French counter-attack supported by tanks, and went into the water himself, encouraging the sappers and helping lash together the pontoons. By the 16th of May Rommel reached to Vains, and contravening orders, he pressed on to Cateau. That night, the French two-army corps was shattered and on the 17th of May, Rommel's forces took 10,000 prisoners, losing 36 men in the process. He was surprised to find out only his vanguard had followed his tempestuous surge. Hitler had been extremely nervous about his disappearance, although he awarded him the Knight's Cross. On 20 May, Rommel reached Arras. General Hermannhoff received orders that the town should be bypassed and its British garrison thus isolated. He ordered the 5th Panzer Division to move to the west and the 7th Panzer Division to the east, flanked by the SS Division Totenkopf. The following day, the British launched a counterattack in the Battle of Arras. It failed and the British withdrew. On 24 May, General Oberst, Colonel General, Gerd von Rundstedt and General Oberst Gunther von Kludge issued a halt order, which Hitler approved. The reason for this decision is still a matter of debate. The halt order was lifted on 26 May. 7th Panzer continued its advance, reaching Lille on 27 May. The siege of Lille continued until 31 May, when the French garrison of 40,000 men surrendered. Rommel was summoned to Berlin to meet with Hitler. He was the only divisional commander present at planning session for Fall Rot, Case Red, the second phase of the invasion of France. By this time the Dunkirk evacuation was complete, over 338,000 Allied troops had been evacuated across the Channel, though they had to leave behind all their heavy equipment and vehicles. Rommel, resuming his advance on 5 June, drove for the River Seine to secure bridges near Rouen. Advancing 100 kilometers, 60 miles, in two days, the division reached Rouen to find it defended by three French tanks which managed to destroy a number of German tanks before being taken out. The German force, enraged by this resistance, forbade fire brigades access to the burning district of the old Norman capital, and as a result most of the historic quarter was reduced to ashes. According to Butler and Showalter, Rouen fell to the 5th Panzer Division, while Rommel advanced from the Seine towards the Channel. On 10 June, Rommel reached the coast near Dieppe, sending off the message Bin and Air Custa, am on the coast. On 17 June, 7th Panzer was ordered to advance on Cherbourg, where additional British evacuations were underway. The division advanced 240 kilometers, 150 miles, in 24 hours, and after two days of shelling, the French garrison surrendered on 19 June. The speed and surprise that it was consistently able to achieve, to the point at which both the enemy and the Oberkommando de Harris, OKH, German High Command of the Army, at times lost track of its whereabouts, earned the 7th Panzers the nickname Jespinster Division, Ghost Division. 
After the armistice with the French was signed on the 22nd of June, the division was placed in reserve, being sent first to the Somme and then to Bordeaux to re-equip and prepare for Untenheim and Silo, Operation Sea Lion, the planned invasion of Britain. 104, this invasion was later cancelled, as Germany was not able to acquire the air superiority needed for a successful outcome, while the Kriegsmarino was massively outnumbered by the Royal Navy. On 6 February 1941, Rommel was appointed commander of the new Afrika Corps, Deutsches Afrika Corps, DAC, consisting of the 5th Light Division, later renamed 21st Panzer Division, and of the 15th Panzer Division. He was promoted to Generalleutnant three days later and flew to Tripoli on 12 February. The DAC had been sent to Libya in Operation Zorn and Bloom to support Italian troops who had been roundly defeated by British Commonwealth forces in Operation Compass. His efforts in the Western Desert Campaign earned Rommel the nickname the Desert Fox from journalists on both sides of the war. Allied troops in Africa were commanded by General Archibald Wavell, Commander-in-Chief, Middle East Command. In August, Rommel was appointed commander of the newly created Panzer Army Africa with Fritz Speierlein as his chief of staff. In four days of heavy fighting, the 8th Army lost 530 tanks and Rommel only 100. Wanting to exploit the British halt and their apparent disorganization, on 24 November Rommel counter-attacked near the Egyptian border in an operation that became known as the Dash to the Wire. Cunningham asked Orhinlek for permission to withdraw into Egypt, but Orhinlek refused, and soon replaced Cunningham as commander of 8th Army with Major General Neil Ritchie. As Rommel attempted to withdraw his forces before the British could cut off his retreat, he fought a series of delaying actions. Heavy rains slowed movements and grounded the Desert Air Force, which aided the withdrawal, yet Rommel's troops were under pressure from the pursuing 8th Army and had to abandon the trucks of the Italian forces, leaving them behind Rommel. By now, Rommel's remaining forces fought in reduced strength combat groups, whereas the Allied forces had great numerical superiority and control of the air. Upon his arrival in Tunisia, Rommel noted with some bitterness the reinforcements, including the 10th Panzer Division, arriving in Tunisia following the Allied invasion of Morocco. Having reached Tunisia, Rommel launched an attack against the U.S. II Corps which was threatening to cut his lines of supply north to Tunis. Rommel inflicted a sharp defeat on the American forces at the Kasserine Pass in February, his last battlefield victory of the war, and his first engagement against the United States Army. The last Rommel offensive in North Africa was on 6 March 1943, when he attacked 8th Army at the Battle of Medanin. The attack was made with 10th, 15th, and 21st Panzer Divisions. Alerted by ultra intercepts, Montgomery deployed large numbers of anti tank guns in the path of the offensive. After losing 52 tanks, Rommel called off the assault. 210th On 9 March, he returned to Germany. Command was handed over to General Hans Jorgen von Arnim. Rommel never returned to Africa. The fighting there continued on for another two months, until 13 May 1943, when Messe surrendered the army group to the Allies. Death. Rommel's case was turned over to the Court of Military Honor a drumhead court martial convened to decide the fate of officers involved in the conspiracy. The court included General Feldmarschall Wilhelm Keitel, General Feldmarschall Gerd von Rundstedt, General Oberst Heinz Guderian officer. The court acquired information from Speidel, Hofacker and others that implicated Rommel. By normal procedure, this would lead to Rommel's being brought to Roland Freisler's People's Court, a kangaroo court. Hitler knew that having Rommel branded and executed as a traitor would severely damage morale on the home front. He thus decided to offer Rommel the chance to take his own life. Two generals from Hitler's headquarters, Wilhelm Bergdorf and Ernst Maisel, visited Rommel at his home on 14 October 1944. Bergdorf informed him of the charges against him and offered him three options, a, he could choose to defend himself personally in front of Hitler in Berlin, N6, or if he refused to do so, which would be taken as an admission of guilt, b, he could face the People's Court, which would have been tantamount to a death sentence, 
or, c, choose to commit suicide. In the former case, b, his family would have suffered even before the all but certain conviction and execution, and his staff would have been arrested and executed as well. In the latter case, c, the government would claim that he died a hero and bury him with full military honors, and his family would receive full pension payments. In support of the suicide option, Bergdorf had brought a cyanide capsule. Rommel opted to commit suicide, and explained his decision to his wife and son. Wearing his Africa Corps jacket and carrying his field marshal's baton, he got into Bergdorf's car, driven by SS Stabs Shafura Heinrich Deuce, and was driven out of the village. After stopping, Deuce and Maisel walked away from the car leaving Rommel with Bergdorf. Five minutes later Bergdorf gestured to the two men to return to the car, and Deuce noticed that Rommel was slumped over, having taken the cyanide. He died before being taken to the Wagner Schule Field Hospital. Ten minutes later, the group telephoned Rommel's wife to inform her of his death. Tomb of Erwin Rommel in Herlingen the official notice of Rommel's death as reported to the public stated that he had died of either a heart attack. To strengthen the story, Hitler ordered an official day of mourning in commemoration of his death. As promised, Rommel was given a state funeral but it was held in Ulm instead of Berlin as had been requested by Rommel. Hitler sent Field Marshal Rundstedt, who was unaware that Rommel had died as a result of Hitler's orders, as his representative to the funeral. Rommel's grave is located in Herlingen, a short distance west of Ulm. For decades after the war on the anniversary of his death, veterans of the Africa campaign, including former opponents, would gather at his tomb in Herlingen. Fritz Erich Georg Eduard von Monstein, born Fritz Erich Georg Eduard von Lewinsky, 24 November 1887, 9 June 1973, was a German field marshal of the Wehrmacht during the Second World War. Born into an aristocratic Prussian family with a long history of military service, Monstein joined the army at a young age and saw service on both the Western and Eastern Front during the First World War, 1914-18. He rose to the rank of captain by the end of the war and was active in the interwar period helping Germany rebuild its armed forces. In September 1939, during the invasion of Poland at the beginning of the Second World War, he served as Chief of Staff to Gerd von Rundstedt's Army Group South. Adolf Hitler chose Monstein's strategy for the invasion of France of May 1940, a plan later refined by Franz Holder and other members of the OKH. Anticipating a firm Allied reaction should the main thrust of the invasion take place through the Netherlands, Monstein devised an innovative operation, later known as the Sichelsknit, Sickle Cut, dash that called for an attack through the woods of the Ardennes and a rapid drive to the English Channel, thus cutting off the French and Allied armies in Belgium and Flanders. Attaining the rank of general at the end of the campaign, he was active in the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941. He led the Axis forces in the siege of Sevastopol, 1941-1942, and the Battle of the Kerch Peninsula, and was promoted to Field Marshal on 1 July 1942, after which he participated in the Siege of Leningrad. Germany's fortunes in the war had taken an unfavorable turn in December 1941, and in the following year during the catastrophic Battle of Stalingrad, Monstein commanded a failed relief effort, Operation Winter Storm, in December. Later known as the Backhand Blow, Monstein's counteroffensive in the Third Battle of Kharkiv, February to March 1943, regained substantial territory and resulted in the destruction of three Soviet armies and the retreat of three others. He was one of the primary commanders at the Battle of Kursk, July to August 1943. His ongoing disagreements with Hitler over the conduct of the war led to his dismissal in March 1944. He never obtained another command and was taken prisoner by the British in August 1945, three months after Germany's defeat. Monstein gave testimony at the main Nuremberg trials of war criminals in August 1946, and prepared a paper that, along with his later memoirs, helped cultivate the myth of the clean Wehrmacht, the myth that the German armed forces were not culpable for the atrocities of the Holocaust.
In 1949 he was tried in Hamburg for war crimes and was convicted on nine of seventeen counts, including the poor treatment of prisoners of war and failing to protect civilian lives in his sphere of operations. His sentence of 18 years in prison was later reduced to 12, and he served only four years before being released in 1953. On July 1940 the German High Command commenced planning Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. On 15 March 1941 Monstein was appointed commander of the LVI Panzer Corps, he was one of 250 commanders to be briefed for the upcoming major offensive, first seeing detailed plans of the offensive in May. His corps was part of the 4th Panzer Group under the command of General Erich Herpner in Wilhelm Ritter von Lieb's Army Group North. The army group was tasked with thrusting through the Baltic states and then advancing on Leningrad. Monstein arrived at the front only six days prior to the launch of the offensive. Operation Barbarossa commenced on the 22nd of June 1941 with a massive German attack along the whole front line. Monstein's corps was to advance with Georg Hans Reinhardt's XLI Panzer Corps to the Divina River to secure bridges near the town of Daugapils. The Soviet forces mounted a number of counter-attacks, but those were aimed against Reinhardt's corps, leading to the Battle of Rysany. Monstein's corps advanced rapidly, reaching the Divina River, 315 kilometers, 196 miles, distant, in just 100 hours. Overextended and well ahead of the rest of the army group, he fended off a number of determined Soviet counter-attacks. After Reinhardt's corps closed in, the two corps were tasked with encircling the Soviet formations around Luga in a pincer movement. Again having penetrated deep into the Soviet lines with unprotected flanks, his corps was the target of a Soviet counter-offensive from 15 July at Seltzi by the Soviet 11th Army, commanded by Nikolai Vitutin. Monstein's 8th Panzer Division was cut off. Although it was able to fight its way free, it was badly mauled, and the Red Army succeeded in halting Monstein's advance at Luga. The corps regrouped at No. The 8th Panzer was sent on anti-partisan duties and Monstein was given the 4th SS Polizei Division. The attack on Luga was repeatedly delayed. The assault on Luga was still underway when Monstein received orders on 10 August that his next task would be to begin the advance toward Leningrad. No sooner had he moved to his new headquarters at Lake Samro than he was told to send his men towards Star Yerusa to relieve the X Corps, which was in danger of being encircled. On 12 August the Red Army had launched an offensive with the 11th and 34th Armies against Army Group North, cutting off three divisions. Frustrated with the loss of the 8th Panzer and the missed opportunity to advance on Leningrad, Monstein returned to Dno. His counter-offensive led to a major Soviet defeat when his unit encircled five Soviet divisions, receiving air support for the first time on that front. They captured 12,000 prisoners and 141 tanks. His opponent, General Kuzma M. Kakanov of the 34th Army, was subsequently court-martialed and executed for the defeat. Monstein received the Swords of the Knights Cross on 30 March 1944 and handed over control of Army Group South to model on 2 April during a meeting at Hitler's mountain retreat, the Berghof. Model's adjutant, Gunter Reichhelm, later described the scene and Monstein's response. He must have paid him compliments about his strategic skills during the attack operations, but he also said, I cannot use you in the South. Field Marshal model will take over. And Monstein replied, My Fuhrer, please believe me when I say I will use all strategic means at my disposal to defend the soil in which my son lies buried. 94. While on medical leave after surgery to remove a cataract in his right eye, Monstein recovered at home in Lignitz and in a medical facility in Dresden. He suffered from an infection and for a time was in danger of losing his sight. On the day of the failed 28 July plot, an assassination attempt on Hitler's life that was part of a planned military coup d'etat, Monstein was at a seaside resort on the Baltic. Although he had met at various times with three of the main conspirators, Klaus von Stauffenberg, Henning von Tresco, 
and Rudolf Christoph Freiherr von Gersdorf. Monstein was not involved in the conspiracy, he later said Preussische Feldmarschall Mutern nicht, Prussian Field Marshals do not mutiny. Still, the Gestapo placed Monstein's house under surveillance. When it became obvious that Hitler was not going to appoint him to a new post, Monstein bought an estate in East Pomerania in October 1944, but he was soon forced to abandon it when Soviet forces overran the area. His home at Lignitz had to be evacuated on the 22nd of January 1945, and he and his family took refuge temporarily with friends in Berlin. While there, Monstein tried to get an audience with Hitler in the Führer bunker but was turned away. He and his family continued to move farther west into Germany until the war in Europe ended with a German defeat in May 1945. Monstein suffered further complications in his right eye and was receiving treatment in a hospital in Heiligenhafen when he was arrested by the British and transferred to a prisoner of war camp near Lüneburg on 26 August. Julius Papa Ringel, 16 November 1889, the 11th February 1967, was an Austrian general in the armed forces of Nazi Germany during World War II. He fought in the Western and Eastern Fronts, as well as the Balkan Campaign. Ringel commanded the 3rd Mountain Division, 5th Mountain Division, 69 Corps, Wake Race 11 and the Army Corps Ringel. He was a recipient of the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves. Early Life Julius Ringel was born in Volkermarkt in the Austrian state of Carinthia. In 1905, he was admitted to a military school in Vienna, graduating on 18 August 1909. Service in the Austro-Hungarian and Austrian armies. Following his education, Feinrich Ringel was assigned to the KUK Landfear Infantry Regiment 4, a mountain infantry unit, and a year later, he was promoted to lieutenant. During World War I, Ringel saw action in Galicia and the Italian Alps where he was taken prisoner of war in 1918. Upon his return to the newly formed Republic of German Austria, Ringel fought against the troops of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in occupying Carinthia. Following the Carinthian plebiscite and the creation of the First Austrian Republic, Ringel was transferred to the Austrian Federal Army where he rose to the rank Lieutenant Colonel in 1932. Service in the Wehrmacht As an avid supporter of the Nazi party, Ringel strongly encouraged the Union of Austria with the German Reich and after the Antlus enthusiastically joined the Wehrmacht with the 3rd Mountain Division. On 1 February 1939, Ringel was promoted to Colonel. When World War II began, he was assigned to the 268th Infantry Division as a regimental commander and he took part in the campaign in the West. On 7 June 1940, Ringel returned to the 3rd Mountain Division, becoming its commander on 14 July 1940. In October, he was promoted to Major General and appointed commander of the newly established 5th Mountain Division. The division saw its first action in the spring of 1941 in the Balkans campaign and took part in the operations codenamed Marito and Merkur aimed to capture mainland Greece and Crete. For his leadership during these operations Ringel was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross on 13 June 1941. The operation in Crete was still underway when Ringel ordered his mountaineers to carry out reprisals against civilians who fought the invading Germans. In November 1941, Ringel's division was posted back to Germany for rest and reorganization. In March 1942 it was sent to the Eastern Front southeast of Leningrad, to take part in the operations against the Soviet Volker Front. For his actions, Ringel was promoted to Lieutenant General and in October 1943 received the Oak Leaves to his Knight's Cross. Ringel's division was transferred to Italy in December 1943 to man the winter line near the town of Cassino. Four months later, he was appointed commander of the 69 Army Corps in Croatia. In June, Ringel was promoted to the General of the Mountain Troops and put in charge of the military district Salzburg, Wake Race 18, Salzburg, from which the Army Corps Ringel was formed. He held this appointment until the end of the war. 
He died in Bayreich, Maine in 1967. General Der G. Bergstrupp Julius Ringel commanded the 3rd Mountain Division from 14 June 1940 until 23 October 1940 The 3rd Mountain Division, German, 3. Gebirgsdivision, was a formation of the German Wehrmacht during World War II. It was created from the Austrian Army's 5th and 7th Divisions following the Antlus in 1938. The division took part in the invasion of Poland 1939 as part of Army Group South, but was transferred to garrison the West Wall before the end of the campaign. In 1940 it joined the invasion of Norway, most famously sending its 139th Mountain Regiment under General Eduard Dietl to seize the ice-free Arctic port of Narvik. The Allies briefly managed to take the town back, but abandoned it to the Germans after the invasion of France. In 1941 the division moved into Lapland to participate in Operation Silberfuge, the attack on the Soviet Arctic as part of Operation Barbarossa, but failed to capture Murmansk. The division was withdrawn to Germany for rehabilitation at the end of the year, but left its 139th Mountain Infantry Regiment behind to operate independently. After rehabilitation, the division returned to Norway in 1942, where it served as a reserve. It was then transferred to the Eastern Front, where it served as a reserve for Army Group North near Leningrad. In November 1942 it was committed to the front where the Soviets had surrounded Velika Iluki, and then transferred to the far south to help in the attempt to relieve Stalingrad. It fought the remainder of the war in the south, retreating with the front lines through the Ukraine, Hungary, Slovakia, and finally surrendering to the Soviets in Silesia at the end of the war. General Der G. Bergstrupp Julius Ringel commanded the 5th Mountain Division from 1 November 1940 until 10 February 1944. The 5th Mountain Division, German, 5. G. Berg's Division, was an elite formation of the German Wehrmacht during World War II. It was established in the Wake Race 18 in October 1940, out of units taken from the 1st Mountain Division and the 10th Infantry Division. The unit surrendered to the U.S. Army near Turin in May 1945. The Balkans Following months of inactivity in Germany, the unit was designated to take part in Operation Marita, the invasion of Greece, in 1941 as part of the Balkans campaign. The unit then took part in the invasion of Malta, codenamed Operation Merca. Here the unit was used in an air landing role where it fought against British forces which had retreated from Greece. The unit's role in securing the islands was significant, and in November 1941, the unit returned to Germany for refitting. Eastern Front In March 1942 it was deployed to the Eastern Front, where it joined Army Group North on the Volka Front, and took part in operations against the city of Leningrad. The unit remained on the Eastern Front until November 1943 during which time it was used primarily for firefighting for the 18th Army in operations near Mengar, Schlieselburg, and Kolpino. Italy Following its year on the Eastern Front the unit was redeployed to the Gustav Line in December 1943, arriving near Cassino. The unit fought out the remainder of the war in Italy and the Western Alps before surrendering to American forces near Turin in May 1945. Walther Heinrich Alfred Hermann von Brauchitsch, the 4th of October 1881, the 18th of October 1948, was a German field marshal and the commander-in-chief, Oberbefehlshaber, of the German army during World War II. Born into an aristocratic military family, he entered army service in 1901. During World War I, he served with distinction on the corps level and division level staff on the Western Front. After the 1933 Nazi seizure of power, Braukic was put in charge of Wakeraysai, the East Prussian military district. He borrowed immense sums of money from Adolf Hitler and became dependent on his financial help. Braukic served as commander-in-chief of the German army from February 1938 to December 1941. He played a key role in the Battle of France and oversaw the German invasions of Yugoslavia and Greece. For his part in the Battle of France, he became one of twelve generals promoted to field marshal. 
After suffering a heart attack in November 1941 and being blamed by Hitler for the failure of Operation Typhoon, the Wehrmacht's attack on Moscow, Braukic was dismissed as commander-in-chief. He spent the rest of the war in enforced retirement. After the war, Braukic was arrested on charges of war crimes, but he died of pneumonia in 1948 before he could be prosecuted. In 1933, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party came to power and began to expand the military, in order to realize Hitler's military ambitions. On 1 February 1933, Braukic was named commander of the East Prussian Military District, Weikreisai, and chief of the 1st Division in Königsberg. As a consequence of the German rearmament the command position Befehlshaber in Weikreisai, commander of the 1st Military District, was expanded. Braukic was promoted to Lieutenant General in October 1933. The staff of the 1st Division formed the staff of the 1st Army Corps and Braukic was appointed its first commanding general on 21 June 1935. Although Braukic felt at home in Prussia, he had a clash with Erich Koch, the local Gauleiter, party head and de facto head of civil administration of the province. Koch was known as something of a crook who greatly enjoyed the power he possessed, and who would bring violence to his enemies. As neither Koch nor Braukic wanted to lose their jobs in the region, the two attempted to keep their feud unofficial. As a result, Berlin hardly learned of their dispute. A dispute emerged a few years later, when Braukic learned that Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler planned to replace the army guards in East Prussia with SS men, with the purpose of persecuting Jews, Protestant and Catholic churches in the district. Even though Braukic managed to prevent the SS replacement of the army troops in the region, Himmler categorized him as a junker, and informed Hitler of the disagreement. Braukic claimed he had done his duty, saying laconically, civilians are not allowed to enter that area. Braukic obtained the rank of General of Artillery in 1936. When the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, Werner von Fritsch, was accused of homosexuality, Hitler promoted Braukic to Colonel General and appointed him the new Army Chief on the recommendation of the Army High Command on 4 February 1938. At the time of this promotion Braukic was also granted cabinet-level rank and authority, though not the formal title of Reichsminister. Braukic welcomed the Nazi policy of rearmament. The relationship between Hitler and Braukic improved during Braukic's confusion about whether to leave his wife for his mistress. In the middle of the Munich crisis, Hitler set aside his usual anti divorce sentiments and encouraged Braukic to divorce and remarry. Hitler even lent him 80,000 Reichsmarks so he could afford the divorce. Over time, Braukic became largely reliant on Hitler for financial help. Like Colonel General Ludwig Beck, Braukic opposed Hitler's annexation of Austria and intervention in Czechoslovakia, although he did not resist Hitler's plans for war, again preferring to refrain from politics. Yet in April 1939, Braukic, together with Colonel General Wilhelm Keitel, was awarded the Golden Party badge by Hitler in commemoration of the occupation of Czechoslovakia. By early November 1939, Braukic and Chief of the General Staff Franz Holder started to consider overthrowing Hitler, who had fixed X day, the invasion of France, as 12 November 1939. Both officers believed that the invasion was doomed to fail. 34. On 5 November 1939, the Army General Staff prepared a special memorandum purporting to recommend against launching an attack on the Western powers that year. Braukic reluctantly agreed to read the document to Hitler and did so in a meeting on 5 November. Braukic attempted to talk Hitler into putting off X day by saying that morale in the German army was worse than in 1918. 35, Braukic went on to complain, the aggressive spirit of the German infantry is sadly below the standard of the First World War, there have been, certain symptoms of insubordination similar to those of 1917-18. Hitler flew into a rage, accusing the general staff and Braukic personally of disloyalty, cowardice, sabotage, and defeatism. He returned to the army headquarters at Sorsin, 
where he arrived in such poor shape that at first he could only give a somewhat incoherent account of the proceedings. After that meeting, both Braukach and Halder told Karl Friedrich Gudela, a key leader of the anti-Nazi movement, that overthrowing Hitler was simply something that they could not do and that he should find other officers to take part in the plot. Hitler called a meeting of the general staff, where he declared that he would smash the West within a year. He also vowed to destroy the spirit of Sorsin, a threat that panicked Holder to such an extent that he forced the conspirators to abort their second planned coup attempt. On the 7th of November, following heavy snowstorms, Hitler put off X day until further notice, which removed Braukach and Holder's primary motivation for the plot. Braukach ordered his army and commanders to cease criticism of racist Nazi policies, as harsh measures were needed for the forthcoming battle of destiny of the German people. When Germany turned east and invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, he again played a key part, making modifications to the original plan. Like his friend and colleague, Wilhelm Keitel, Braukach did not protest when Hitler gave the German army the same instructions as the SS on whom to kill in the occupied territory, but he later issued a series of decrees that ordered that commissars were to be shot only if their anti-German sentiments were especially recognizable. As the Battle of Moscow got underway, his health was starting to fail. Even so, he continued his work. In the aftermath of the failure at Moscow, Braukach was dismissed as commander-in-chief of the German army on 19 December and was transferred to the Führer Reserve, officer's reserve, where he remained without assignment until the end of the war, he never saw Hitler again. He spent the last three years of the war living in the Birdy Mountains southwest of Prague. Karl Friedrich Otto Wolff, the 13th of May 1900, the 17th of July 1984, was a German SS functionary who served as chief of personal staff Reichsführer SS, Heinrich Himmler, and an SS liaison to Adolf Hitler during World War II. He ended the war as the supreme SS and police leader in occupied Italy and helped arrange for the early surrender of Axis forces in that theater, effectively ending the war there several days sooner than in the rest of Europe. He escaped prosecution at the Nuremberg trials, apparently as a result of his participation in Operation Sunrise. In 1962, Wolf was prosecuted in West Germany for the deportation of Italian Jews, and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison for being an accessory to murder in 1964. He was released in 1971 due to his failing health, and died 13 years later. Arrested on 13 May 1945, he was imprisoned in Schöneberg. During the Nuremberg trials, Wolf was allowed to escape prosecution because of his early capitulation in Italy and by appearing as a witness for the prosecution at trial. Although released in 1947, he had been indicted by the post-war German government as part of the denazification process. Detained under house arrest, after a German trial, Wolf was sentenced to five years in prison in November 1948, for his membership in the SS. In June 1949, he was released from prison after his sentence was reduced to four years. After his release, Wolf worked as an executive for an advertising agency. He took up residence with his family in Starnberg. In 1962, during the trial in Israel of Adolf Eichmann, evidence showed that Wolf had organized the deportation of Italian Jews in 1944. Wolf was arrested put on trial in West Germany. In 1964, he was convicted of deporting 300,000 Jews to the Treblinka extermination camp, which led to their murders. Sentenced to 15 years in prison in Straubing, Wolf served only part of his sentence and was released in 1971 following a heart attack. Wolf was involved in the Holocaust. On 8 September 1939, shortly after the invasion of Poland, Wolf wrote to the Gestapo office in Frankfurt, Oder, and ordered the immediate arrest of all male Jews of Polish nationality and their family members and the confiscation of any wealth. In 1942 Wolf oversaw the deportation transports during Gross Action Warschau, the mass extermination of Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto. In August 1941, Himmler and Wolf attended the shooting of Jews at Minsk which had been organized by Arthur Neber who was in command of Einze's Grupa B, a mobile killing unit. Nauseated and shaken by the experience, 
Himmler decided that alternative methods of killing should be found. On Himmler's orders, by the spring of 1942, the camp at Auschwitz had been greatly expanded, including by the addition of gas chambers, where victims were killed using the poison gas Zyklon D. After the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich in June 1942, Wolf developed a strong rivalry with other SS leaders, particularly with Heydrich's successor at the Reich Security Main Office, Reichsicherich Optimt or RSHA, Ernst Kaltenbrunner, and with Walter Schellenberg of the Foreign Intelligence Service in the RSHA. 19. His position was weakened by his frequent absences from Berlin, in part due to his suffering from pyelitis and renal calculus, kidney stones, which required surgery. Wolf fell out of favor with Himmler and was dismissed as his chief of staff. In April 1943, he was relieved of his duties as liaison officer to Hitler. Himmler announced he would temporarily take over Wolf's duties. A new replacement as liaison officer to Hitler's HQ did not occur until the appointment of Hermann Fagerlein, who assumed the duty in January 1944. Wolf had particularly angered Himmler by his divorce and remarriage in March 1943. Himmler, who believed the family to be the nucleus of the SS, had denied Wolf permission to divorce, but Wolf had turned directly to Hitler. Himmler still appears to have considered Wolf a loyal member of the SS, for in September 1943 Wolf was transferred to Italy as Supreme SS and Police Leader. In that position, Wolf shared responsibility for standard police functions such as security, maintenance of prisons, supervision of concentration camps, and forced labor camps, as well as the deportation of forced laborers with Wilhelm Haster, who was the commander-in-chief of the security police. When Wolf became plenipotentiary general of the German Wehrmacht in July 1944, he also became responsible for anti-partisan warfare in occupied Italy. By now Wolf commanded the police and the entire Ear Army in Italy. So far Wolf's involvement in war crimes in Italy remains largely unclear, partially because source material on the degree to which SS units participated in Nazi security warfare is lacking. By 1945 Wolf was acting military commander of Italy. Eduard Wolrat Christian Dietl, the 21st of July 1890, the 23rd of June 1944, was a German general during World War II who commanded the 20th Mountain Army. He received the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves and swords. Nickname, the Hero of Narvik. Born in 1890, Dietl joined the army on 1 October 1909 as a Fahnen Junker in the 5th Infantry Regiment Grand Duke Ernst Ludwig of Hesse of the Bavarian Army in Bamberg. In World War I, he was deployed on the Western Front and he was wounded October 1914 and October 1918. During the Weimar Republic, he joined the Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, the precursor to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, and the paramilitary group Freikorps of France Ritter von Epp in 1919. Dietl continued to serve in the German army and, as a general major, he helped organize the 1936 Winter Olympics held at garmisch partenkirchen Dietl commanded the German 3rd Mountain Division that participated in the German invasion of Norway on 9 and 10 April 1940. Most of this division was landed at Narvik by a German naval force of 10 destroyers, commanded by Commodore Friedrich Bonte. Subsequently all 10 destroyers that had ferried Dietl's troops to Narvik were sunk in the first and second battles of Narvik. Dietl's mountaineers withdrew into the hills and later retook the town when Britain abandoned her efforts to evict the Germans from Norway due to German success on the Western Front, the Franco-German border, Luxembourg, Belgium and the Netherlands. Outnumbered by British, French and Polish forces, his skillful defence utilised ammunition, food and sailors, redrafted as infantrymen, from the sunken ships. This gained him the nickname the Hero of Narvik. Three. Dietl subsequently commanded German forces in Norway and northern Finland and in Eastern Europe and rose to the rank of General Oberst, commanding the 20th Mountain Army on the northern eastern front, where the results of the German Arctic campaign were disappointing. Dietl initially turned down his promotion, but was convinced to accept the appointment by General Oberst Alfred Jodel. 
Alfred Joseph Ferdinand Jodl was a German General Oberst who served as the Chief of the Operations Staff of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, the German Armed Forces High Command, throughout World War II. Dietl was sent to Finland designated to be the hero in the snow, to be a counterpart to Rommel who would be the hero in the sun, also given a secondary theater leaving the main stage to Hitler. A convinced National Socialist and one of Hitler's favorite generals, he was the first German soldier to be awarded the Oak Leaves Cluster to the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, on June 19, 1940. Dietl was also popular among his men and his Finnish allies. Historian Klaus Schmider remarks that Dietl had too much political baggage to compensate for his admirable record as a mountain troops leader. As a young officer, he refused to assist the civil government in crushing Hitler's abortive beer hall putsch in 1923. He was also a founding member of the NSDAP. What has led the Bundeswehr and the German federal government to reverse honors towards Dietl, though, is his recently discovered view on marriages between Scandinavian women and his soldiers, which was extreme even by the standards of the Third Reich, after Dietl circulated an order that called Norwegian and Finnish women racial flotsam, Himmler himself had to intervene to rescind it. On 23 June 1944, the Ju-52 aircraft carrying Dietl, General Der Infanterie Thomas Emil von Wicked, General Der G. Bergstrup Karl Eaglesier, Gainer Alloyt Nant Der G. Bergstrup Franz Rossi and three other passengers crashed in the vicinity of the small village of Retenegg, Styria. There were no survivors. Until 1997, the municipality of Ringelai in the Bavarian forest honored Dietl with a memorial plaque. In 1977, the site changed into one honoring World War I veteran Albert Leo Schlageter instead. The Bavarian town Freyung honored Dietl by naming a street General Dietl Strasser.